you. Back in Winnipeg, Brenda was growing up out of the public eye. She was making her way through school. By now, John Money had written another book describing the twins' case as dramatic proof of his theory about gender identity. But far away from the textbooks, the family were dealing with the reality of the situation. Bringing up Brenda was not always easy. I could see that Brenda wasn't happy as a girl, no matter what I tried to do for her, no matter how I tried to instruct her. She was very rebellious. She was uh, very masculine, and I could not persuade her to do anything feminine. Brenda had almost no, no friends growing up. Everybody ridiculed her, called her cave woman. She was a very lonely, lonely girl. At about this time, the local psychiatrist looking after Brenda wrote to John Money about the concerns she had with Brenda's development. Brenda was showing clear signs of being deeply disturbed and unhappy. John Money didn't publish this. When Brenda was 13, the Reimer family decided to stop seeing Money. From then on, nothing would be heard about Brenda for 15 years. During this time, most of the scientific community continued to believe that the case was a success. Dramatic proof of the whole idea that you could change the gender identity of a perfectly normal boy. But now, biologists were closing in on one crucial new piece of evidence about the brain. Although a difference had been found in the brains of male and female rats, scientists had, as yet, been unable to find a difference in the human brain. But one team in Amsterdam was looking. It took quite some uh, time to make the leap from uh, Gorski's herd into the human brain, because um, uh, in the first place you need the right material post-mortem material of uh, human beings without a brain disease is very hard to get. It took them five years to collect enough human brains for their research. Then, the painstaking work began. Just like with the rats, slice after slice of male human brain was meticulously examined and compared to an identical slice of female brain. Ultimately, I think we uh, uh, measured uh, over 100 uh, brain samples. The difference um, uh, between the male and female brain became uh, gradually apparent. They had finally found the sexually dimorphic nucleus in human brains. In the male brain on the left, the SDN is twice as big as it is in the female brain on the right. Over the years, four more types of SDN, different in males and females, were found clustered together. Could this be where our gender identity lies? The part of the brain that makes us feel male or female. <laughs> To answer this question, the team in Amsterdam turned to a unique set of individuals. Emma Martin is a transsexual. Physically, she was born a normal boy, but she spent her whole life feeling like a woman. When I was four years old, 
something happened which I guess was the starting point of, of my realisation that, that I was different from other people. Um, I was playing in the back garden in my pedal car and um, I suddenly realised that there was a little girl in the garden next door basically doing the same thing, just going up and down the garden on a tricycle. And I saw her through the fence and I just realised that they'd made a mistake that, and I couldn't understand why I couldn't understand why my parents were treating me as a boy um, Emma's case seems to go against the very idea that nurture can override nature she was brought up as a completely normal boy yet something inside her brain appears to have overridden this Transsexuals don't describe themselves as having a female brain. They describe themselves as being female. Uh, but of course, this strong feeling to be a female should come from somewhere. And we are certain it's not coming from the heart. It's coming from the brain. In the 1990s, Professor Schwab's team began the first ever study of transsexual brains to see if there was some physical reason for transsexuals' unusual gender identity. Schwab was convinced that the answer must lie in the cluster of sexually dimorphic nuclei. If he could prove this, it would be the first evidence that gender identity was linked to a specific part of the brain. After years of painstaking investigation, he found a key new SDN. The picture on the left shows that particular SDN in a normal male brain. The picture on the right shows the same SDN in a male transsexual like Emma. It's the same size as that of a woman. The 11 male transsexual brains Schwab studied showed this SDN to be the size of a woman's. It seemed clear to Schwab that this cannot be coincidence, that this particular SDN must be important in defining our gender identity. Other preliminary studies seem to suggest that this difference in the brain between men and women happens before birth. And if so, it may be that our gender identity is already so established in the womb that it cannot be overridden by upbringing. I think if we look to the entire set of data, uh, it's clear that we are not born neutral, that our sex difference is present already uh, very early in development. The big question was, what had happened to Brenda Reimer? And in 1995, she was tracked down. The girl who had helped to make John Money world famous was living anonymously in Winnipeg. And it was time to go public. I didn't like dressing like a girl. I didn't like behaving like a girl. I didn't like acting like a girl. Brenda Reimer, the boy who was turned into a girl, was living as a man. Well, I wore dresses on occasion, and I never played with girl stuff. I usually got stuck with dolls or something like that for my birthday or Christmas, and I sat in the corner collecting dust, played with my brother's things. I wasn't too happy about sharing. I share with my brother, or I don't have anything. For almost 14 years, David had lived as Brenda, and for most of this time, he had been unhappy. During the early years, I thought we had made the right choice, that it would work out. Dr. Money kept saying it would work out. And I thought, well, he should know. But by the time Brenda had become a teenager, her life had become so difficult, she had become a virtual recluse. 
And I was so pitifully lonely. And I tried to put makeup on, but I looked like Bozo the Clown. You ever can imagine a guy trying to put makeup on himself? After, after a while of trying, I just gave up. I said, well, what's the sense of trying? No matter how much I, I put out in effort, it's never going to work. 